The Emmy Award-winning series, da, 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 that's how Mad Men used to go, showed us the pressures of the New York advertising world in the 1960s. Advertising is based on one thing, happiness. And you know what happiness is? Happiness is the smell of a new car. It's freedom from fear. It's a billboard on the side of the road that screams with reassurance that whatever you're doing, it's okay. Mm, that the best-selling author and longtime New Yorker columnist, that's Ken Oletta, says the industry is no longer operating in the style of Don Draper. His new book is called Frenemies, the Epic Disruption of the Ad Business and Everything Else. It explores a shift in global advertising and what it means for the future of media. Ken Oletta has reported on the digital revolution over the past three decades, and he joins us, we're happy to say, at the table. Hello, Ken Oletta. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. I love the title right. of your book, Frenemies, because I know normally it means we're friends, but I really don't like you. So how does that apply in the advertising business? Well, if you're an agency, suddenly the people who are your friends, yeah. uh, Google and Facebook, are competing and going directly to clients. Your, your clients are increasingly saying, I want to take stuff in-house and miss the agency. And, and the publishers, the New York Times, BuzzFeed, et cetera, who you put your ads on, are suddenly saying, hey, we can be ad agencies too, mm -hmm. going directly to the clients. But the biggest frenemy is, in fact, the public. The public, on their, particularly on their mobile devices, don't want to be interrupted yeah. by terrible ads. Yeah. And 30-second spots don't work. B small screens don't allow big, big, big video ads. And people are saying, why are you doing this to me? And then they say, the advertiser then comes back and says, well, we're going to give you ads as information because we'll know so much about you. Isn't this great? And then the public begins to say, I want privacy. hey, wait a second. Yeah. How do you know so yeah, much about How do you know me? so much? Yeah. Because more people, you say, are on their phones and watching TV. And the phone is a very personal device. It's you like carry your purse it everywhere or your with wallet. You. Yeah. Right. So how much of a crisis is this, both within the advertising industry, but also to the things that exist because of advertising? Well, that's one of the, if you follow the money, as I tried to do here, advertising and marketing is up to $2 trillion worldwide industry. It supports all media. 97% of Facebook's revenues come from, from advertising. Yeah. Nine, almost 90% of Google has come from that. Newspapers, magazines, much of television, apps, all dependent on, on advertising. So if that money dries up, the consequences are profound. Well, and describe how that relates to sort of what was considered the traditional media networks like CBS and others and newspapers, those that usually got most of, if not all of their money from advertising. When I did a book on the networks in 1991, Three Blind Mice, Three Blind Mice. 100% of the revenues of, say, CBS came from advertising. Today, 46% does. CBS and Les Moonves, who's the head of CBS, is one of the characters in the book. Mm -hmm. They have done a very good job of relying on other revenue sources, which is one of the challenges for every newspaper is to have that problem. How do I get other revenue sources? CBS and the other networks have had that. They sell to digital companies like Netflix and, mm -hmm. and Amazon. They get retransmission consent from the cable companies in return for their programs. And they, own, they now are allowed to own programs and sell them. So they have other sources of revenue, and that's good. But if that 46% of advertising goes down to 25%, CBS in trouble. How do you You've make got, that up? Well, yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, subscriptions. Um, some people have tried to get subscriptions from going right to the user, get them to right. pay more. Is that going to make up for that well, drop? Well, I mean, uh, we could, the, the four of us could afford to pay more in subscriptions, but the average American spends roughly $250 a month, and that doesn't cover their prescriptions for, for Con Ed or Power and, and stuff like that. The one thing that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton agreed on in the campaign is that the working class and the, and the middle class, their income was frozen for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. How do they afford more subscriptions? Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful but idea, but it's a pipe dream. The game has definitely changed. You talk about the characters in the book, which I think are really great. You've got Les Moonves, who you describe as a Steve Jobs of TV, brilliant operator who likes to win. Carolyn Everson, who's a badass at Facebook, and then Michael Kasson. Talk, start with Carolyn Everson about why she, how she factors into this game, and Michael Kasson. Well, here she is. They the, tell the story in the book, I think, you know, very well. The, the book, in a way, and I have a chapter on this, it's gone from Mad Men yes. to Math Men. Math Men are the engineers and the data scientists. So here's Carolyn Everson, who comes out of the advertising world. She's very good. She's a great salesperson. She's a great people person. She's at Facebook. But she, she works for, for a company that's basically based on engineering. And so she's trying to put a friendly face on, on what many people in the advertising community see as an unfriendly 
uh, company, Michael Facebook. Michael Kasson? Mm -hmm. Michael Kasson is a connector to a very insecure industry. People who are full of anxiety. You said everybody's scared, basically. They are scared. scared. I mean, it's, it, but it, disruption scares a lot of people. If you go to the newspaper industry and do interviews, or even much of the television industry, people are scared. People are terrified of Netflix. Yeah. And, and so insecurity means that if you can find a character like Michael Casson, who I call the connector, he basically, he represents everybody. Yeah. He represents clients, he represents publishers, mm -hmm. right. he represents Facebook and Google. Yeah. Okay, Ken Aletta, author of Frenemies. Yeah. It is yeah. indeed. Thanks very much. Frenemies right. goes on sale Tuesday.